Hey there guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week one of the season two of the NPCC. Now week one, we are up against Radioactive. As you can see, teams are on the screen. I haven't done a team builder for this, because I'm still waiting for some gfx -y kind of bits and solutions to uh, what I have. Uh, quick rundown of the team, AV Jolteon, Tail Glow Free Attack Manaphy, especially bulky, but obviously just bulky in general, Pythagoras, physically defensive Miltank, um, super special hard hitting Mega Sceptile, and special defensive uh, Skarmory. So basically, the plan is get rid of Thunderous, set up with Manaphy, win. Will it work? You're about to find out. Um, spoilers, I do have to speed up a bit of this battle uh, at one point because, you know, he has a crush on his team, so you can expect what is about to happen. So, we lead off with Jolteon because I'm expecting to level Thunderous. He doesn't, he leads off with Chandelure, and I figured, well, if he's Scarfed, I'm gonna, uh, I went out of speed, and obviously he'll hit me. I'll live because I have an Assault Vest, but it'd be really good information uh, if he does outspeed you if I know it's Scarfed. So, uh, he knows I had speed, so another Shadow Ball will kill him. Uh, I'm gonna click Volt Switch here. Uh, the Domfan Switch could have obviously happened. Um, I don't think he switched in thinking I was gonna go for Electric Move. Uh, this is actually an Assault Vest Domfan, I figured out pretty quick. Um, now, I have Hidden Power on my Jolteon, which I do realise later on that I have misgenned. It's not Hidden Power, I just think it's meant to be. Um, however, I have a pretty safe switch in to my Skarmory. I know this thing, I'm pretty sure Dumpang can get Fire Fang. Um, and don't, don't correct me if I'm wrong, just let me be stupid. Um, so he switches out, Skarmory's a pretty good check to that thing. Now, I'm not going to go for Rocks here because, well, he can stay in a rapid spin. Uh, I'm going to Toxic because I was honestly expecting something like the Mew or Cresselia to come in. Um... But it didn't, so I do actually poison this thing, and this thing's quite weak already, so I, I honestly can't stay in. I mean, I know I'm especially defensive, but it's a chandelier, I can't take it. The only thing I have on my team that pretty much, it checks this thing really well, is uh, Miltank. This is physically defensive Miltank. I think this is maybe choice specs uh, chandelier, because it just does a lot of damage. Um, now, another turn of Toxic will take him down after leftovers. Um, Miltank can actually take another hit, so I'm just going to click Milk Drink because I can't afford to have Miltank go down. As you'll see, Miltank is probably my best Pokemon this match. It done so well, and it's so underrated in my opinion. Anyway, I do get the Milk Drink off, and we heal back up to about maybe 60% after leftovers as well. And Chandler is going to go down, so we do take the early 6-5 lead in this game, and that put me on the front foot uh, decently well for the time being, as you'll soon see. Um, so in comes Jupiter, which is the Thunderous. Now, I need to get this thing damaged, or basically killed, as soon as possible. And the best thing I have for it, at this moment in time, is my uh, Kofagrigus, because my Sceptile isn't making it up yet. Plus, I don't know if he has any Power Ice. He goes for the Thunder Wave, that's absolutely fine by me, because Kofagrigus is a slow piece of shit anyway. Uh, I'm going to pick will because I wasn't sure if he was going to stay in or not. Uh, after me predicting Focus Blast, I wasn't sure if he was choiced, so I was maybe expecting some sort of switch. He doesn't, so that's fine. Uh, I do later on find out this is Life Orb, so burn on Life Orb each turn. It's going to rack up nice. Now, Cofagrigus is going to be really useful for Cresselia, Mew, and the Gyarados, because I do have the Culverberry. Um, so I'm going to go out into Jolteon, expecting him to click Thunderbolt, because I'm expecting him to have that to be like the best move he can hit me with. So I go out into Jolteon, uh, expecting the Thunderbolt, heal up a bit as well. Uh, here I get Hidden Power, I think it's Hidden Power Ice, expecting Dom Fan switching, but also knowing that if it's HP Ice, it'll do some good damage to uh, Thunderous. But as you heard there, it didn't make a super effective sound, so I don't actually know what Hidden Power this thing is, it's probably Dark. I mean, I used the new function on uh, PK Hex to import, and I probably put the wrong Hidden Power on, on Showdown. So, he has HP Ground, which is fair enough. Um, so, he doesn't actually have Hidden Power Ice. Which means Sceptile would have been decent against this thing, to say the least. So, we're especially defensive. We can take a Life Orb Thunderbolt pretty well, actually, and kill this thing off with a Thunderbolt. Not a Thunderbolt, sorry, a Shadow Ball. So, we're still, or we're back in the lead again. We're five against four. Um, now, I, I really wanted him to bring in the Gyarados at this point, because he has Mega Gyarados in his team. And I want him to go for that Crunch, because I have the Coldberry. I have will o -Wisp. I've already shown him this. It's a ballsy move on his behalf. Um, he hasn't seen leftovers. Obviously, it could be Rocky Helmet. He wouldn't know yet. But I am Coldberry, so um, unless he gets a crit, I will live this, and I will be able to burn him. But obviously, we do get the Coldberry. He does hit the crunch. 
There's no shenanigans in terms of defense drops. We all know I'm paralyzed. We get his mummy. What do you guys reckon happens next? The one thing that I don't want to happen, the full parrot. So, that kind of made me salty halfway through, because that would have completely shut down this Gyarados, and this would have been one extra setup opportunity for Manaphy. But alas, that didn't happen. So, Income Sceptile is basically the best thing I have to take on this thing. Leaf Storm one shots this thing if it's max health, not if it's max special defense, because it hasn't takes rock damage. If it took rocks damage, it would die to a Leaf Storm. I am modest, by the way, because I didn't need the Timid to outspeed his team, because if he was a Scarfer, um, a max speed Scarfer, to outspeed Timid. No, outspeed modest, it would outspeed Timid as well, if you get what I mean. So, um, I go for Leech Seed because I was fully on expecting a Cresselia switch in. Mew's okay, I guess. But, as we know, Mew can pretty much learn any move in the whole entire game, so this thing is definitely going to have Ice Beam. So, I don't want to stay around to find out. Um, and I'm going to switch on out into Little Blue because I'm fully expecting the Ice Beam. Now, this Mew is kind of like a turning point in the battle because he goes for Ice Beam. I don't see any sort of, like, Life Orb or anything, so I'm... I'm thinking to myself, he must have a choice Scarfer, because otherwise Sceptile and Jolteon just completely destroy him. So, this Mew is going to go for Thunderbolt this turn. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Manaphy can take it. Oh my god, Manaphy can't take it so well at all. And I clicked Tail Glow, which was a massive, massive, massive misplay. If I had clicked any sort of attacking move, I would have been in a much better stead for the rest of the game. So now... I'm pretty confident he's going to click uh, Ice Beam, expecting me to switch out into Sceptile, predicting the Thunderbolt. So I'm going to make the switch into Skarmory, and this is me trying to make plays. Now, I do make the wrong play here. He indeed goes for the Thunderbolt again, and I'm thinking, right, um, at this point, is he going to click Thunderbolt again? I'm thinking to myself, after that play, I... I I overplayed that play. And now I'm underestimating my, in my mind, I'm under, underestimating my opponent. Because I could have lived an Ice Beam here. I expect him to go for Thunderbolt again. I switch in my Mega Sceptile to get that Lightning Rod boost. Because if I get that Lightning Rod boost, I'm pretty much good to go. Uh, but he clicks Ice Beam. And now I'm playing on Tilt. Because I had the power which prevented me from burning his Mega Gyarados. And I just overplayed and underplayed two turns in a row. So I think at this point I now have Skarmory, Miltank, and Manaphy. And as we know, this Mew outspeeds my Manaphy, because I only put enough speed to outspeed Zatu, which is base 95. Because I honestly didn't think he'd bring specially uh, speedy Mew. Looking at his team now, it makes perfect sense. It makes absolute perfect sense, because he has Crest to be the um, spe uh, defensive monster it is. So he can bring offensive Mew. That's what the sign of a good team is. So, um, is this the start of the stall fest? It's not, that comes later on. Um, but he does paralyze my uh, mill tank, which is annoying. Uh, a running theme of this game, paralysis is, by the way. So I got into Maiden because I need to get this thing top six, uh, if I can. Uh, plus, I can take this thing on pretty damn well, even if he has hidden power fire at this rate because Crest is weak. Now, I really, really, really regret not clicking toxic here. I think I'm at low health. I'll just heal up. Whereas I know for a fact I can take two more psychics. And in the game, it's the only move I see him use. And me toxicking this Cresselia would have been huge. However, the fact that I did roost up means I am more well equipped to take on this Gyarados. Now, I do make the toxic play this turn, but it is unfortunately a turn too late. Now, I'm very happy to stay in here with my. Um, Skarmory against this uh, Mega Gyarados because he can't do too much to me unless he starts to set up Dragon Dances, which is exactly what he does. So he sets up one Dragon Dance and I'm roosting this turn, so at least I'll have Sturdy so I can't be afraid of anything killing me. Um, so I roost up and I'm now at full. And I haven't revealed it yet, I do have the Whirlwind because, well, let's face it, he has the chance to set up with Mew, to set up with Virizion, to set up with Mega Gyarados, to set up with Cresselia to set up with Thunderous. So, I know I wouldn't stay in on Thunderous, but I needed some sort of phasing, because otherwise I just straight up lose. So, I'm pretty sure at this point he's trying to think, uh, thinking he can seal the game. 
Um, he gets greedy, gets two Dragon Dancers. To be honest, he only needed one to outspeed my whole team, so probably a misplay on my opponent's behalf there. Um, and I do bring out the Mew. So now I'm at full health, uh, I decide to go for the Toxic here. Probably another misplay. I haven't done the Calc. I should have probably just gone for the Drill Pack. Um, it, although it wouldn't have killed. So to be honest, Toxic is probably better in the long run. Because um, it's going to get damage off this turn. And it's going to get damage, uh, damage off next turn. So he's going to kill me off the Thunderbolt. I didn't really want to switch in anything else. Uh, Mill Tank isn't especially defensive. If I had bought a specially defensive Mill Tank and physically defensive Skarm, I think I might have been a bit more equipped for this battle. Um, taking on these things a bit more one-on-one. -on -one. So I have to bring in Mill Tank at this point. And I'm hoping to God he chokes and keeps Mew in. Um, and I click Milk Drink because I'm like, if he does choke, he's going to attack me. He's going to die to Toxic and keep myself at max health. Having that Mew dead is the only way I can win this game. But as you saw, he switched out. And I only have a Paralyzed Mill Tank and a Manaphy, which doesn't outspeed the Mew anyway. And we've seen the Mew has coverage for Manaphy and it'll take it out. So basically, this game is on Mill Tank. And this is the Stool Fest. I say Stool Fest. This is the... Uh, boring bit of the battle where it's basically him going for psychic trying to get special defense drops this is me healing up and count the body slams by the way guys I don't I don't get any paralysis with like however many I do on this crest so basically it's a stall fest as soon as I get powered uh, it puts me on the back foot we're going strong in that sense already he has got one crit do I get any crits of course not he's gonna continuously go for psychic there's his crit that I was talking about and I get paralyzed the same turn so I'm like I'm so, just, just don't get another crit, because otherwise I just flat out lose here. Uh, but Miltank is doing real good work here, however it's just not getting the paralysis which I need to even have a remote chance of uh, beating this thing. I would literally need him to get paralysed three turns in a row, set up to plus six. A, a plus six scald wouldn't have even one shot this thing, because it's a Cresselia. Um, and I am luckily kind of just sort of 1v1 in this thing, I, I'd say relatively successfully, but you know it's... His health's pretty much back to where it was in the first place. So um, here he does decide to switch. He's obviously seen my leftovers and milk drink is uh, restoring a lot of health compared to how much damage he's doing. So he's going to bring in the Don Fan to go for the knockoff. We've seen him use it already. Um, and of course, Body Slam isn't going to do much anyway. So I am physically defensive, so I don't fear this thing at all. I actually have Earthquake on this Mill Tank. I don't reveal it because I needed it for the Chandelure. Because uh, otherwise I can't touch it. Really, really, really regret that. If I had a Heal Bell, or if I had um, Toxic on this thing, this game could have gone a lot more different. I'm going to heal up because I see this is an opportunity to get back to full because Dom Fan can't really do too much to me, to be honest. Uh, it's kind of a bulky one. He's going to go for the spin here. I'm just going to continuously get damage off from this thing. It can't heal up. Um, it's Assault Vest, so I do kind of need to put it into a range where I know a Scald will kill, even if I'm not necessarily at plus three. Not even sure a score will kill at this point, but I do get the power, which is nice, I guess. But it's on the complete wrong Pokemon where it doesn't matter because I outspeed him anyway. Um, so in comes Cocktail. I'm going to set my rocks back up because I need rocks to have a chance of taking down Mew. Um, so I put them back up. Now, this Mega Gyarados can't really do too much to me unless it's at, like, plus three. I don't think you can one-shot me even then, potentially. Um, so... I'm pretty happy staying in here. I know I haven't got, I mean, I haven't got a phaser anymore, so he can set up as much as he likes, but he's toxic, which is really important. Uh, if I burnt him anyway, he would have taken more damage over the point, uh, over the battle rather, and he wouldn't be doing any damage to me anyway. I'd be a lot happier bringing him uh, Manaphy at that point, but it didn't work out that way. But after Body Slam and Toxic, um, another Body Slam and Toxic combo is going to take this thing out. So as long as I don't get flinched or powered, you know, I'm going to be fine. Uh, I take half of that, uh, half my health from a plus one Mega Gyarados, so nice going, Miltank. And you mono what? Are you in, and you, are you, are you, I can't remember, but he's tier five in this, and I'm like, why are you tier five? You're glorious. So unfortunately, Miltank doesn't get the kills. Garmy's actually got two kills this game from Toxic. And this is where the battle pretty much gets tied up for me. So I've already had one crucial power. I've already had one crucial misplay. I get paralyzed. And I can't heal up at this point. I didn't get the chance to try and paralyze this uh, Cresselia anymore because I'm going to die to another Psychic. And that leaves me with my Manaphy, who gets outsped by the Mew. And I'm sitting here regretting the fact not 
putting substitute on my mana fee. I bought Ice Beam on it, and in the hindsight, I really shouldn't have bought Ice Beam on it. I should have bought Signal Beam, um, because I wanted Ice Beam for Verizion. If for some reason he bought a Slow Bulky set, I don't know why. Or I should have listened to Shardy. Shock Horror, you shouldn't listen to Shardy really ever, but I should have this time. Should have bought the Bulky Rain Dance Scored Rest set. So. I'm now paralysed, not that it really matters because I would have been outspared by Mew anyway. Um, I still outspeed the Domfan anyway because I'm faster than a paralysed Domfan. Um, I am at plus 3 and you'll see that this score, this is max special attack by the way, I'm timid. Um, we, we chew the Psychic really well uh, considering like we haven't got really much bulk investment. And of course Manaphy gets the school burn. Turn 1, I was going for the paralysis of Body Slam. Like, I think I landed like six body slams in this game and got one power. Same chance as Scald. Scald seems to always get the burn chance, but you know, it doesn't matter. So I'm kind of hoping that at this point, now I have a burnt crest in front of me, I might be able to make this a 2 0 instead of a 3 0. But as we know, Crest is a bulky ass mofo and lives to school. I don't get I don't think I got one crit this game at all. Um, he obviously gets his health back from his leftovers. This is the point where, like, I really wish I'd kept Copper Grigus a bit better. Although, it, w it should have worked. I would have kept it around. Um, if it didn't get killed by the goddamn Crunch Gyarados. But, obviously, as you can see, this crest probably lives on, like, 2 HP or something. After burn, and Manaphy goes down. And we do lose the game against Brady. It was a good game, but his team is fat as fuck. Um, Cresselia, Mew, Domfan, Mega Gyarados. Mega Gyarados like base 109, 130 defenses. I was like, what? Why is this thing so fat? So that's the game. We do lose in the first week of the MPCC, which is a bit of a shame. However, I'm pretty sure in every season of the PPL, and well, obviously this one, I lose the first game. I come back stronger. It's fine. The game was pretty close if you look at it in the fact that Mew was in red health and poisoned. Cresselia was pretty much dead. Domfan was paralyzed but had a fair amount of health left. So the game was pretty close, but the scoreline doesn't reflect it. So Brady's team is super scary. Just to mention, he also had Verizion, Embor, uh, Zatu for Magic Mount shenanigans uh, in his uh, backup mons, I guess you could call him. He is a really scary team, so I'm not feeling too upset by that loss. We've got plenty more games to make up for it. We've still got another 9, 10 games to play, so I'm confident we can do okay. we just got to pick it up and go again next week. I can't remember who I'm against next week, but I'm rambling. You'll see a team builder hopefully next week, um, and hopefully we'll get that win. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a like if you did, and I'll see you for next week's battle. Bye.